Hello, I'm Jill at ingvid.com and today's lesson is on the subject of going to the theatre. Okay, so this links a little bit with another lesson we had on meeting up with a friend. Uh, one of the options was to go to the theatre, another is to go to an art gallery. So this one is if you have arranged with your friend to go to the theatre. Um, this is what to expect when you get there. And also in the second part of the lesson, we'll be looking at ways of talking about uh, the play that you're watching. Uh, maybe either in the interval or at the end of the play, you would want to talk to your friend about what you've been watching. Okay, so first of all, um, going to the theatre. Um, you've probably been to the theatre in, in your own country, so you know what, what's involved. Uh, but this is specifically uh, for a UK type of theatre. Okay, so you've probably arranged where to meet already, um, either outside the theatre or inside, in the foyer, which is the just inside the entrance, the entrance hall of the theatre, the foyer, which is a French word, uh, in the bar or in the cafe or in the shop. Um, not all theatres have all of these things in them, it depends. The bigger theatres will have all of those things. Smaller theatres uh, will probably not have all of those. They may not have a shop. Um, they may not have a, a bar. Some theatres are actually um, above a pub, the, the public house in um, the UK. Um, they're very small theatres, so there is a pub somewhere to drink, but it could be the downstairs part of the building before you go up or behind to the back of the building for the theatre section. So we'll talk about that a little bit more later on. So you arrange where to meet. So these are the names for different places to meet um, around in or around the theatre. Um, and then when you go in, you may have to, if you don't already have your tickets, you need to go to the box office. This is the place uh, where you get your tickets. Um, you may have already paid for them in advance or you may want to ask the person in the box office, do you have any seats for, the, for today's performance? and they might show you a, a chart, the, the seating plan, where, where would you want to sit. Okay, so the box office is where you go for your tickets, right? And then once you've got your tickets, you may also want to buy a programme, which is a little booklet containing a lot of information about the, the show that you're there to see. So the program will list uh, the names of the people performing in the show, uh, the people who have been involved in the, the technical side, the lighting, uh, the sound effects, the costumes, um, creating the, the scenery on, on the stage, all, all of the, the sort of artistic side that goes into a production. So the program will give a sort of, uh, it's a kind of way of giving credit. You get the credits in the program for everybody because it's a, a big sort of team effort putting on a play. Lots of people are involved. Um, so all the credits for everybody who's worked on that production will go into the program. And there will be a little bit about the, the story of if it's a play or a musical or whatever it is. There'll be a bit of uh, information about the show itself, what it's about. So it, it's, it's a useful thing to look at um, before you go in to, to see the show. 
Okay, so then you're inside the theatre building and then when it gets close to the time that the show is due to start, you will probably hear an announcement over a loudspeaker, usually. Um, you will hear something like, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the show will begin in five minutes, something like that. Um, please take your seats, meaning please go in and sit down. It doesn't mean take. People joke about this. When you take your seat, it means you sit down in your seat. It doesn't mean you pick the seat up and take it somewhere. So it's a little bit ambiguous. But please take your seats means go in, sit down. Um, we need you in there ready for the show to start. So when you hear that, you go to the entrance into the what's called the auditorium the sort of central part of the theatre where everybody sits, where the audience, the audience sits and they're looking up at the stage where the performers are. So you have to go in. So at the entrance, you have to usually show your ticket to somebody who's checking to make sure people don't go in who have not bought a ticket. That person is called an usher. Um, it's a funny old-fashioned word, but they will check your ticket and they might say, um, they might give you some directions like uh, turn left, uh, just go up the steps and your seat is just over on the right, something like that. So you go in into the auditorium. Um, if On your ticket, uh, you may have some numbers and letters that tell you where your seat is, but there are some smaller theatres called Fringe Theatre. Um, they're not big theatres in, say, London West End, uh, the London West End. Um, are the big theatres in central London. Uh, a fringe theatre, as I said earlier, it's often a, a, a little theatre above a pub or at the back of a pub building. Um, so those are quite small. Often there is only seating for maybe 40 or 50 people, 60, 70 at the most. Um, so with a fringe theatre, often, there are no seat numbers. There's nothing on your ticket to say where you should sit. You just go in and look round and decide where you want to sit. So um, if, if you're one of the last people in, um, you just have to sit wherever there's a space. Um, if you go in early, you can probably find a really nice seat in the front row or something. Okay, so a larger theatre, um, on your ticket, you will usually have the row number and the seat number. So in, in an auditorium, um, you've got all the, the rows of seats like that. Um, so And say that's the stage there. And then you've got rows and they're often A, B, C, D, E, etc. So the rows are in letters and then within each row you have seat numbers. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, etc. Um, so if you have D3 on your ticket, you want row D, seat three. If you have G38 on your ticket, you need row G and it must be a very long row to have at least 38 seats in it go along. You often have to go past people, uh, say, excuse me, excuse me, sorry, excuse me, and to get past people who were already sitting there. So find your seat, sit down, get comfortable, get ready for the show to begin. Okay, one very important thing 
is to switch off your mobile phone. Okay. Um, if mobile phones ring during a performance, it's one of the worst things that can happen uh, in the theatre world. Um, it's very distracting for the performers uh, and it's very distracting for other members of the audience. People get very angry uh, if mobile phones start ringing. Uh, so don't disrupt the show. Don't spoil the show for yourself and for other people. Turn off your mobile phone. And also, you know, you're there to see a show. You've paid money to see it. Um, you need to concentrate on the show. If you had your mobile phone on and you were checking your text messages at the same time, it's not like watching television where maybe you've got your mobile phone on and you're also watching television. It's not like that. You really need to concentrate 100% on the play or the, the show that you're seeing. So sometimes people have said uh, they saw someone in the audience with a l the light from their mobile phone shining. They could see somebody was actually on their phone during a performance. Um, so I know sometimes it's, uh, there's an emergency or something, but um, really you should turn your mobile phone off, okay, for, for various reasons. Right, and then you can really sit back and relax and enjoy what you're watching. So, and then quite often any production, any performance um, will have an interval. Usually there's a first half and a second half with an interval in between. So you have a choice quite often whether to just stay, if it's a 20 minute interval, and like me, if you're like me, you'll think, oh, oh, I just want to sit here and read, read the program or something. I don't want to get up out of my seat and walk out with all these other people and then stand around not knowing what to do for 20 minutes. Um, I just want to stay in my seat and uh, just read the program or chat to my friend or whatever. Uh, but you do have the option of going out in the interval. Some people order drinks for the interval. They may have ordered drinks in advance and paid and given a name. And they, they go out and they find that their drinks have been set out for them with their name uh, to save time. Or people just go out and get some drinks at the bar. Um, Sometimes, though, you're not allowed to stay in your seat in the interval. Sometimes because um, the production people want to change what's happening on the stage. If there's no curtain uh, to, um, to close off the stage, if it's an open stage, they may want to change the set or do something and they don't want people sitting there watching them while they do that. So they might say, ladies and gentlemen, please leave the auditorium during the interval. So um, the, it depends on the production, really. OK, so that's the first half of our lesson. Um, I hope that's been useful with some vocabulary and the kinds of things to expect um, in a UK theatre. So um, we'll now move on to the second part of the lesson and have a look at um, a little bit more to do with talking about the theatre with, with the friend that you're with. Okay, so you've seen the play, the show, or you've seen half of it and you're in the interval and you're with your friend. So, um, the, the most logical thing to do is to talk about what you've just seen. So, what will you talk about? How do you talk about a play that you're in the middle of watching or that you've just seen? 
what kind of things can you say? So um, I think it helps to, to look at different aspects of the play, all the different parts that go into it. So the people performing, um, things connected with the story, um, who wrote it, uh, the visual aspect of uh, what it looks like on stage. So let's just go through those and um, see what kinds of things you can talk about. So one of the obvious things when you go to a play is you're watching actors and actresses um, and you may be thinking, oh, that they're so good the way they're performing. They're so good at what they're doing, hopefully. <laughs> um, so they're acting, but maybe they're so good that you forget that they're acting. You start to think these are real people, maybe. So actors, that's the word for a male actor. But nowadays, female act actresses are also called actors nowadays for reasons of equality. Women are often called actors as well, but the word actress is still used as well. So actors, actresses, and the acting, the acting in general, so you could say to your friend, oh, isn't the acting good? Isn't the acting good? Meaning all of the actors, aren't they good? Okay. Uh, you may think if you're at one of the, uh, the big theatres where they have very uh, uh, famous people performing there sometimes, you may think you've seen one of those actors before, perhaps on television or in a film. So then you might have a look in the program to see which, what's the name of the actor playing that part. Um, and then in the program also, you get little biographical notes for each performer um, to say where they have appeared before, other plays they've been in, uh, films they've been in, television programs they've been in. So you can read a little bit about each actor in the programme and then that might help to remind you of a TV programme perhaps where you saw that person before. They may have been in a completely different kind of role, uh, the character, the role, it's called the role or the part, the part that they're playing. Um, Actors sometimes play quite different personalities in the different roles that they do. So you could find out from the programme if you think you've seen someone before. OK, so that's one thing to talk about with your friend. Um, and then the production itself, the actors are playing characters. So they're fictional, often fictional characters. Um, so each character has a different personality. They're all behaving in different ways. There will be relationships between the different characters on stage. So you might want to talk about a particular character, what, what you think of them. Um, if they're a nice person or not, not a nice person, whether you like them or dislike them. Um, of course, if, if in a play, if all the characters were nice people, um, it would probably be very, a very boring play <laughs> because the thing about plays is there has to be some kind of conflict, a problem to be resolved. So if all the characters are nice to each other all the way through the play, there won't be very much drama in it. So you have to have some bad characters or badly behaved characters in a play uh, otherwise there, there's nothing nothing happening okay so the characters and how they behave is another subject you can talk about um, and then that what links in with that is the situation that the characters are in the story that you're seeing uh, the plot 
the, the word plot is to do with the sort of consequences. If somebody does something, then that makes something else happen, and then that makes something else happen. The plot is the sort of forward movement of the story. Okay, so you can talk about that. One character does something and it sets off something else happening. Um, it may cause an accident, for example. Um, so if, if a character leaves a child's toy on the floor, uh, they don't tidy it up and, and the child's toy is perhaps something with wheels on it, a little toy train. And then another character comes along, they don't see it, but they step on it and they fall over and hit their head and hurt themselves. That's part of the plot. Uh, it's a consequence of somebody doing something. Okay, so you could talk about whether it seems realistic, true to life, or exaggerated, because in drama things can be exaggerated just to make it more exciting. Um, it could be surreal even. If it doesn't really feel real, it just feels very, seems very strange. Strange things happen. That would be surreal. Not real, but surreal. Um, very, very odd things happening. Okay. And then there's the question of who actually wrote the play or, or the show, whatever it is, whether it's written by a man or a woman. Uh, what their nationality is, whether it's a translation that you're watching, maybe with a Russian play like by Chekhov um, in the UK, that would be performed in an English translation. And there are lots of different translations um, of the same plays by different translators in different periods in history. So you could have a modern translation of Chekhov or you could have a, a much older translation of Chekhov. So all sorts of things like that to talk about. Okay, and maybe you can also read in the program about the, the person who wrote the play, find out a bit more about them from there. Okay. And then there's the visual aspect of the set, what you can see on the stage, the scenery, furniture, things like that. What does it look like? Is it a room in somebody's house? Or is it in the open air in a field in the countryside near a farm? Could be anything. So you talk about that and uh, whether you think it's been well designed or not. Um, okay. Um, costumes and hairstyles. There's somebody in the production team responsible for these things. So you can talk about the, what people are wearing, the actors are wearing, their, their hairstyle, whether they're modern or historical. Is, is it present day or is it a long time back in history when people wore different styles of clothes? Um, then there are things like the music, the sound effects, um, which add to the atmosphere of the play and the lighting, um, just lighting, you know, the different colours, different effects. If, um, if it's a scene, for example, in the countryside on a summer's day, the lighting has to try to suggest sunshine. So that's um, something that has to be achieved inside an enclosed building to create a sense of sunshine in the open air. So there is a skill to the lighting. So those are some specific things you can talk about with your friend, either during the interval or after the play. And then, okay, so say you've watched the whole play and it's come to an end and then it's time to go home. So you might want to say just a few general things afterwards to your friend. Maybe thanks for coming, um, it was interesting, or if you really liked it, oh, it was amazing, or it was fascinating. These are quite strong 
positive things to say. Um, if, if you think it was a bit strange, uh, you could say, oh, it was unusual. It was an unusual play, but interesting. You, you don't want to sound too negative about it. Um, even if you really didn't like it, you don't want your friend to think that, you know, you've both wasted your time bothering to go. So you could say, oh, it was unusual, wasn't it? I haven't seen a play like that before. Um, it was strange. Or if it was a, a comedy, it was funny. Or um, it was sad. It could be both funny and sad in different places. It was dramatic. Of course, you expect any play to be dramatic. Uh, the word drama means a play. But dramatic, it might be more than just normally dramatic, um, very exciting, for example. And you can just use a word like, oh, it was enjoyable. It was really enjoyable. Um, I'm glad we came and uh, see you again soon, that sort of thing. So um, I hope that's given you some ideas of, of how you would talk to your friend about the play. And anyone you see afterwards, if you're having a conversation a few days later and you're telling them about the play that you went to see, you can tell them a little bit about it too, using the similar sorts of um, ideas here. Okay, so um, if you'd like to go to the website, ingvid.com, there is a quiz there to test you on this lesson. And thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.